Hello, my name is Laura Felling, and today my talk is entitled, Does Partner Diversity Make for Stable Relationships? Model Predictions for Multi-Species Mutualisms Using Partridge Beam. This is a project I've been working on with Dr. Hank Stevens, and I've been conducting at Miami University. So this is the Camera Crista fasciculata mutualism on the left, which involves the plant and its four partners, pollinators, ants, rhizobia, and mycorrhizae. This is a system we're using to address my long-term goal of understanding how partner diversity, complementarity, and redundancy can influence the fitness of mutualists and the stability of these systems. We're interested in modeling species interactions to evaluate how partner diversity affects the fitness of Chemicrista fasciculata plants. Specifically, does partner diversity enhance stability? How do partners affect one another? And how do these interactions shift under environmental change. And so to quantify these interactions and make predictions, our first step was to see if we could estimate these interactions as direct linear per capita effects and do so without an ideal experiment. And so to model the Chemicrista system, we use data from a project done by King Keller and others, which manipulated some but not all of the components involved. And we estimated those effects using two different equations, one proposed by Bob Payne when we had data from an experimental manipulation of the state variables, and another we proposed based on the La Capultera assumptions when we did not have direct experimental manipulation of the state variables. Now, while direct linear effects are often wrong in detail, they're often very useful approximations and a good place to start. And so that brings me to our results, which compare the actual data from Kane and colleagues and the outcome of our model. So if we look here, we can see the x-axis compares the rhizobia treatments and the y-axis is the number of nodes, individuals, or grams, depending on the response variable. The blue lines represent the with and treat without and treatments and the red lines the with and treatments. And then lastly, the solid lines represent Keller's original data and the dashed lines represent the output of our model. So our approach captured some of the features of these data and we're investigating four hypotheses to explain discrepancies between the model and Keller's data. And so that's including a suboptimal experimental approach, nonlinear effects, higher order interactions, and important unmeasured and unmanipulated species like mycorrhizal fungi. And so this summer, I have established a field experiment in which, like Keller, I'm manipulating rhizobian ants, but also uh, mycorrhizae, and applying drought treatments in order to better understand these interactions and how they may shift with environmental context. And I wanna thank you all for listening today, and I would be happy to follow up with anyone who may have any questions.